Oh, Edinburgh is uh, a very good town for grieving, I would say. It's, uh, there is something about Edinburgh which is enormously sad uh, to me, and that's partly a personal issue. Um, I was on my way to gig in Edinburgh because I spent so many years on tour uh, when I found out that my grandfather had died in 2002. And I was on stage in Edinburgh in a proper, you know, this scene could come from a Robin Williams film. I was on stage in Edinburgh, encoring, brackets, this did not happen that often in my comedy career. <laughs> and I came off stage to find a message in uh, 2004 to say that my grandmother, who was in hospital and was fine and was going to be fine, was in fact not going to be fine and would be dead by the end of the week. I always think of Edinburgh as a place which comforts me when I am sad. Um, I have been very sad there. It's not Edinburgh's fault. Um, <laughs> but it has this very stern kind of forbidding atmosphere. It's got these big grey buildings. Mm -hmm. It's frequently raining. Arthur's seat kind of glowers down upon it. And I always think of it as somewhere which looks like it's going to be stern and then folds you up in a warm embrace and tries to make you feel better. And that's why. It's because I wanted yeah, to send privacy. Alex somewhere where she was happier or could be happier. I think I've already said that it's, it's a loving book. It's very, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's one of the more hopeful books about depressed people that I've ever <laughs> read. I mean, um, it's not a depressing book. It's very, it's gripping and, and, um, and, and uh, you know, obviously you want to know what happens, but way more than that, you want to know how these kids are going to turn out. You want to know if she's going to, you know, be able to make a step back into the world. Yes. Um, and, uh, but I, I have to say, even in the face of, you know, genuine tragedy that exists um, not just in the past but in in the pages it uh, it seems like you you got to take a, sort of a kind view of humanity yeah I do it's surprising isn't it I feel like I'm I'm shocked and disappointed I <laughs> sorry to let you down but yeah now I set out to write a book which basically said the opposite of what I believe which basically said you should be careful reading the classics it could be a risky business <laughs> <laughs> instead of classics equals best which is you know my general theme of life but and I think at the end of it you end up going no classics will make even ter when terrible things happen then the classics will sort of make it better I think I failed and make it worse yeah but a lot worse well, think, a little the, better the thing that for me that was the the most I love teaching um you know I was raised by teachers and and uh um, I, uh, I, I was, you've talked to me about the classics and I've been like, yeah, that sounds yeah, good. <laughs> okay. I don't know. <laughs> Look over there. That's Flamingo. <laughs> even weirder than the Elizabethan stuff I like. Um, but, uh, but you, uh, the, I think the book does an amazing job of, of, of connecting these kids to that, to those stories. Yeah. And, I hope so. um, and the idea that it, that it can damage them as much as it can inspire them, I think it's actually extremely cool. Yeah. Um, because it, uh, you know, it, um, it does speak of the eternal power, and these powers are eternal, of these, these old narratives. Yeah, that's great writing um, for you, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that we should still be moved yeah. by Hamlet. We should still be moved by Oedipus. But these not just moved, moved to action and occasionally corrupted. Yes. Occasionally, you know, to take the wrong thing from it, but to take something. Yeah. Um, that's, I mean, it's, she's, she's a very inspiring teacher. Yeah, even while I she's hope so. Even oh, while she's I'm failing, I'm failing. And she's desperately worried about the kids liking her, which is the first thing you're not supposed to do. Yeah, <laughs> the first mistake. Um, yeah, but no, I um, think she is quite, she, re she really does care. And I think it shows, and I really do believe, perhaps naively, um, that mostly, most children can be won over by knowing that you actually like them. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very tempting when you're faced with a room full of kids. And it's easy for me to say now, uh, mm -hmm. because now all yes. I have to do is wander into a school for an afternoon and give a talk about, you know, classics or oh. broadcasting or journalism or something. And so basically, I'm the school trip compared with some maths. It, I see why it, they're easy for me to talk mm -hmm. to now. But um, I, I quite like doing it. That's why I say yes to going and talking to them. It's fun. Talking to kids is fun. They have an energy that frankly, old, frail people like me no longer have. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the pages seemed heavy to turn, and I had to have a young man come and do that for me. I heard from that, I liked the words. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think liking kids, she has the thing that teachers need, which is to think that kids are good company. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think she has that going on. So, okay, let me ask you this. Uh, a classroom. Yep. First day. Yep. Blank page. Yep. Uh, stand-up audience. Yep. Which is scariest? Uh, a stand-up audience is more likely to 
be drunk enough to throw something at you and the lights are right in your eyes, which means that you won't see it till the last minute. <laughs> That's the real issue. At least with a chair from a schoolroom, you're in the same light amount. So you'll probably see it coming and you can duck. Um, so, yeah, I think probably uh, what I didn't like about teaching was the certain knowledge that if you got things wrong, they might fail an exam and you'd ruin their life. And it was bad <laughs> enough having to worry about that when they were my exams. I didn't really like being responsible for other people's exams. Um, whereas with stand-up, the worst case scenario is they go home and go, oh, she wasn't funny. And that feels like a very small piece of damage to inflict on the universe compared with, you know, selling weapons or something like that. You go, oh, it's not so you're so dealing bad. with the actual responsibility of the thing. Yeah. The experience, you're not talking about yourself. Yeah. You're talking about, um, I mean, because a lot of people sitting there thinking you're not funny while you're telling jokes seems to me like the most terrifying thing in the universe. It's not ideal. Children, I'm not going to lie. Children, I mean, in a classroom, they expect you to know something which works to your advantage because even you if do. you don't, <laughs> you say something, they will believe it. Yeah. You can always um, be a week ahead of them as well. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, exactly. slightly ahead in their textbook. Exactly. Yeah, you can always um, be a bit ahead. And the blank page, I believe the blank page is capable of throwing things at me okay. at this point. But, um, yeah, uh, no, that's but fair it's enough. Not, uh,